Welcome to this week's edition of World Crisis Radio, and this is Webster Tarpley in Washington, D.C., and we are now getting, as predicted over the past several weeks, a barrage of calls from the ghouls and jackals and hyenas of the finance establishment were getting calls for drastic, draconian, killer austerity against the American people. The big bankers and their stooges at the Federal Reserve Board, led by helicopter Ben Bernanke, the new Kjalmar Schacht, or he wishes he were the new Kjalmar Schacht, are trotting out their plans for the mass austerity turn that they're going to try to impose starting next year with the help of Obama. Remember, Obama has already announced that next year will be the time for austerity. He's got a budget freeze going uh, on all discretionary spending, he says, in the in federal budget for uh, the following year. So uh, this is now the, uh, the din, the chorus, coming from all of these outlets, including, notice, the right-wing reactionaries who are usually uh, aggressive and calling for counterattacks, the Limbaugh's and so forth, are now putting on a demeanor of resignation, highly suspicious resignation in the face of calls for this austerity turn. Because this, of course, is the Wall Street policy, and it allows you to operate behind the screen even of the Tea Party, except on certain issues where these people are going to lose. But let's get into it now. Uh, in terms of the uh, historical parallels we've been working with, 80 years ago this month, we had the coming of the austerity dictatorship of Heinrich Brüning, the hunger chancellor to Germany, in uh, March and April of 1930. And this is the guy who destroyed the economy and destroyed the political system, opening the door to the National Socialist seizure of power. Let's see where we are in that. But let's now go to Hjalmar Schacht in Dallas, <laughs> and that would be Bernanke giving his speech in uh, Dallas, and he's talking about the dire situation of the long-term U.S. federal budget, and he is calling for blood, sweat, and tears, naturally from you, not from the financiers that he represents, that control him. Uh, Various Wall Street characters, the Diamonds, Pandit, the Bandit, Blank Fine, Mac, and the rest of these predators. There's not a word about taxing Wall Street turnover. There's no mention of a Wall Street sales tax. Everything else is being taxed, from haircuts to bowling balls uh, and billiard balls, but nothing on the Wall Street sales tax. So let's listen to Bernanke. He says, we're in a dire situation, and we face difficult choices. And let's give it to you in his own words. And I quote the inimitable words of Helicopter Ben Bernanke, speaking in Dallas this past week, to avoid large and ultimately unsustainable budget deficits, the nation will ultimately have to choose among higher taxes, modifications to entitlement programs such as Social Security and Medicare, less spending on everything else, from education to defense, or some combination of the above. Higher taxes, as we'll see in a minute, that is going to be the value-added tax or national sales tax, an extremely sinister, regressive tax. And I underline the word regressive. It cuts into the necessities of the poor man, the wage earner, the middle class. It attacks the amenities of the middle class, right, the occasional trip to the movies, the occasional bottle of wine, whatever it is, but it leaves the luxuries of Ben Bernanke's super-rich parasitical constituency untouched. So a little touch of class consciousness, you can see right through this. So higher taxes, and he means regressive ones, certainly not the Tobin tax or Wall Street sales tax, which he has never uh, mentioned, which he opposes like the plague. Modifications to entitlement programs, that means gouging your economic rights, taking away your economic rights under Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, unemployment benefits, food stamps, um, and so on down the line. Social Security and Medicare above all. Medicare, of course, now being gouged by Obama's $500 billion in cuts. There are cuts in Social Security 
and in the um, the Pentagon's Tricare for Veterans program. And now they're going to turn to Social Security. They're going to try to take your pension away. Bush tried it under right wing cover in 2005 and failed, and now it's 2010, 2011. And Barky Obama, the Wall Street puppet, will try it under left cover. Less spending on everything else from education to defense. Wait a minute. Less spending on education? How are you going to be competitive in the world economy of today? We are already falling behind in all the key areas of achievement in the school system if you put less money into education, even as they bust the unions, right, the uh, a branch of the American Federation of Teachers here in uh, Washington, D.C., is well on the way to capitulating to the vulture Michel Rhee, the, uh, the chancellor of the school system, whose uh, only credential is that she's a union buster, wage gouger. Less spending on everything from education to defense. Well, if you shut down certain uh, defense uh, assembly lines, you're going to be destroying the only high-tech capability you've got left. You've already dropped out of the space race. <clears throat> so what's left? The Chinese are going to get to the moon again before the U.S. So that's Helicopter Ben's uh, line. He wants to have a credible plan to reduce long-term deficits. And this could boost the economy by enhancing the confidence of investors. Oh, enhancing the confidence of investors, those wonderful investors. When they say the market, when they say investors, both of those in quotes, let's remember who that is. It's the bandit, the pirate George Soros. It's the unspeakable gang of thieves at Goldman Sachs. It's Pandit the Bandit at the bankrupt Hulk of Citibank. It's Blank Fine at Goldman Sachs. It's uh, Mac over at Morgan Stanley. They're steadily bidding up the price of gasoline now. You're getting up towards $3 a gallon in many areas. On the basis of what? On the basis of pure speculation by these resurgent hedge funds and other uh, fly-by-night operations on the London ICE exchange. They're robbing you blind. It's time to attack, counterattack Wall Street, because they've been attacking you for a long time. So the Obama administration says that they are very much aware <clears throat> that the deficits are going to be in the $1 trillion range for, le for the rest of the decade. Helicopter Ben points to Social Security draining resources from the broader federal budget. Wait a minute. What happened to the lockbox, Ben? Ever since the Greenspan reform of Social Security, you'll remember that one, the vast increase of the regressive payroll tax back in 1982-1983 used to pay for stupid Reagan's tax cuts for the rich and super rich. They turned around, they cut taxes for the super rich, and then they increased taxes in the most regressive way they could so that the burden would fall on working people. That, stu that money was supposed to be in a lockbox, Ben. Have you forgotten about the lockbox? Have you forgotten the tremendous debts that are owed to Social Security uh, in, the, in the form of Treasury bonds that are held by Social Security? Is that called draining resources when you pay a commitment that has been made? Anyway, the double dealing and the duplicity and indeed the economic stupidity of these people is beyond belief. And here's what Ben says. Nothing prevents us from beginning now to develop a credible plan for meeting our long-run fiscal challenges. Indeed, a credible plan that demonstrates a commitment to achieving long-run physical sustainability could lead to lower interest rates and more rapid growth in the near future. Yeah, more rapid growth of derivatives, more credit default swaps, more structured investment vehicles, more collateralized debt obligations, more toxic paper. It's poisonous. The more you have, the poorer you are, and the deader your economy is going to be. Back in a minute. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Uh, in the meantime, of course, you should always be looking at uh, tarpley.net. We have a new analysis up on Tiny Tim Geithner's trip to Beijing, the attempt to export depression into China with a policy of competitive devaluation of the U.S. dollar. That's what it means. If you upvalue the renminbi, you're downvaluing the U.S. dollar. That's competitive devaluation. That's beggar my neighbor. That is what the British did in the 1930s. Franklin D. Roosevelt wisely said, uh-uh, no way to the British when they tried to suck him into that at the London Economic Conference of 1933, which he wisely 
boycotted and blocked the British plan to export the depression to every point in the compass. Uh, so tarpley.net, you'll also see uh, an essay there about the, uh, the fall of empire, and the thesis is there's one standard graveyard for empires or great states in general, died of oligarchy, in the case of the Soviet Union, died of nomenclatura oligarchy uh, in that system, the party government KGB and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, other uh, oligarchs in that system. And, of course, in our system, the oligarchy is financier oligarchy. When they say the market and investors, it means that gang of thieves, Wall Street, whose pictures and names and biographies you should now know by heart, right? Bernanke uh, works for Diamond, for Blankfein, for Mac, for Pandit the Bandit, uh, and so on down the line. We saw some of them. Again, these, these uh, characters came out from under their rock for these hearings of the uh, Financial uh, Investigating Committee, right? The one that we've seen uh, this week. We'll get back to that in a minute. Um, so Bernanke wants blood. Bernanke wants to take your economic rights away. You've paid into Social Security and Medicare all your life, and uh, Bernanke wants to cut it. Notice that he can operate to some extent under the cover of anti-government rhetoric. All the people out there saying, down with government, yeah, right, down with Social Security, down with Medicaid, and you come in there as a flanking operation, giving aid and comfort to Wall Street as they attempt to impose their deadly, and I'm talking deadly in the sense of concrete human beings dying, their economic policies. Now, in terms of what to do, well, helpfully, on Tuesday, White House advisor Paul Adolf Volcker, him, the man of the uh, 22% prime rate, highest uh, interest rates in 2,000 years, according to Helmut Schmidt of Germany at the time, Volcker wants higher taxes, but not just any tax. He wants a European-style sales tax known as the value-added tax. What is the value-added tax? Well, in most European countries, it's 17, 18, 19, 20 percent, which is already included in the price of everything you buy. There's something like this in uh, Canada. I think that's the goods and services tax that was such a horrendous development under Mulroney, the infamous Malrené, uh, back in the 1990s in the uh, era, I guess, of, of Bush, Bush the, uh, the elder. So voter wants the VAT, the V-A-T, the value-added tax. And, uh, well, that's deadly. Again, that's a regressive tax. That's a tax that cuts into the necessities of the poor, the amenities of the middle class, and does not touch the luxuries of the super-rich. In a modern society, under modern civilization, taxation must be progressive, not proportional even, and certainly not regressive. And this VAT is about the worst thing you can do. So therefore, if you get into arguments with people who want the VAT, you better have a counter-argument, and we do. It's called the Wall Street sales tax, the Tobin tax, the securities transfer tax, the financial turnover tax, the trading tax. You can call it whatever you like, it's the Robin Hood tax, and now I am uh, uh, have to report that the British election is on. Uh, uh, the Gordon Brown regime with Alistair Darling and company, they are going to the voters now. On the other side, David Cameron, the public relations slickster, a Tory reactionary. So we have, in effect, the corporate state with bailouts against the promise of, uh, of more bailouts, but this time also with... Uh, with an extremely draconian policy. This guy, Cameron, is uh, another candidate to be a new burning. He wants to be an austerity dictator. That's the, the direction. The only positive thing going on in Britain right now, and I hope that it comes to the fore rapidly, I urge people to get busy over there, it's this Robin Hood tax. It's the Wall Street sales tax, in this case, the City of London sales tax. And to the extent that that emerges as a big theme in the British election campaign now over the next four weeks, and I'll try to bring you some reporting from the ground if I can, that will then kick over here into the United States. So we'll get an alternative on the table. We want to say no to the value-added tax, tax Wall Street speculative turnover, not even profits. I don't care whether they make profits or losses with their complex models of black shoals derivatives and all the rest of this. They can make up stories that they're losing money. No, no, no. We want to tax turnover. 
If you sign a derivatives contract, that's reportable. One percent goes into the public till. Uh, so the bankers pay for the oppression which they have created. So we've heard from Bernanke. He wants blood. Volker, another little Kalmar Schacht of our time, he wants the value-added tax. And now let's not forget another little brooding, this time the one with his helicopter beanie with a propeller on it, Peter Orsag, director of the White House Office of Management and Budget. Let me just read what the uh, Wall Street Journal says about him on Thursday. The administration, they paraphrase, has taken steps towards deficit reduction by signing a health care overhaul with a commission meant to rein in Medicare costs. Ooh, a commission meant to rein in Medicare costs. Gosh, that is IMAC or Super MedPAC, or both, depending on how they actually institute this chaotic bill. Uh, the um, Medical uh, Council uh, is uh, this IMAC, this is uh, the idea. Of this is to uh, is to tell you which uh, medical technologies are considered cost effective. That is to say, will they pay for you? Will you live? Will you die? Surprise! It's a death board. It's a death panel. It's genocide. They gave a trillion dollars to the banks from the treasury, and between the treasury, the FDIC, and the Federal Reserve, it's thought to be in the neighborhood of about twenty-four trillion, according to the most recent. Uh, accounting, and uh, now they're turning around and saying, "Well, we gave Wall Street what they needed. And now we're gonna we're gonna essentially pay that debt off by uh, taking blood and uh, the lives of uh, the American people." And that's Orsag. That is his specialty. This is the guy who wants no Pap smears, no mammograms, no PSA tests, uh, no medical tests in general. Orsag has declared war on medical tests, and that's what the IMAC or MedPAC on steroids is going to do. And Orsag then goes on to say that uh, Obama has created this fake commission. This is now the Erskine Bowles Al Simpson commission that will make recommendations for deficit cuts. And he says, this is necessary, but not sufficient. So hold on to your hats. It's pointing time, an austerity dictatorship of the most brutal, brutal type. Back in a minute. And here we are again with World Crisis Radio, Webster Tarpley in Washington, D.C., urging you to keep up uh, with the various articles and commentaries, some of them from Russia Today, where I do appear from time to time. Uh, you can get all of that at tarpley.net, and of course it's all for free. Uh, let's just remember now, the predecessor of Helicopter Ben is, of course, Bubbles Greenspan. These are two little Hjalmar Schacht uh, left over from uh, Weimar, Germany. Greenspan had been hauled in front of this uh, Angelides uh, Commission, that is the uh, commission that's investigating the causes of the, uh, of the crash, right, of the banking panic of 2008, and uh, this, of course, uh, is a moment to, uh, to assign uh, guilt. Uh, there's war guilt, right? And then there's depression guilt. Uh, depression guilt attaches to Greenspan big time, especially because he is one of the people who insisted not only that derivatives not be banned or uh, regulated, but that they not even be reportable, that it, that it was okay to have secret derivatives contracts, over-the-counter derivatives, contracts made in secret between... Uh, counterparties, among counterparties, that would not even be reportable to the government. So ultimately, nobody knows the amount, uh, this tr crushing burden of the derivatives bubble. I work with the, uh, and have been working with the estimate, 1.5 quadrillion, 1,500 trillion dollars worth of derivatives worldwide in existence at any given time. Uh, and you can thank Greenspan for that. And the person that tried to get them made reportable was, of course, Brooksley Bourne, who in 1998-1999 was the Clinton appointee at the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, and she wanted to make them reportable, and she was blocked by Robert Rubin of Citibank, by Larry Summers, currently hanging on in the Obama White House, although reports are that he might leave, and, uh, and by Greenspan. 
So uh, Brooks Lee Bourne gets the moment of uh, vindication and puts Bubbles Greenspan on the spot, telling him, quote, the Fed utterly failed to prevent the financial crisis. The Fed and the banking regulators failed to prevent the housing bubble. They failed to prevent our biggest banks and bank holding companies from engaging in activities that would bring them to the, wor- to the verge of collapse. And I think that's pretty much uh, what she says. She manages to say fail nine times in a series of questions. Did not the Federal Reserve, she asks, did not the Federal Reserve system fail to meet its responsibilities to carry out its mandates? Yes, of course. Uh, and we get uh, Angelides into the act. My view is you could have, you should have, and you didn't. It would be nice if Angelides filled in what he should have done. So, obviously, Greenspan squirming. Uh, he's already said that his metaphysical idolatry, totemic fetishism of markets that he learned from the uh, fascistoid Ayn Rand, that this, uh, his faith in the infallibility of markets has now been slightly shaken. But, of course, he comes back with this impudent story, the reactionary legend about the Depression. This is sort of the, um, you know, in, in the 1920s, the German uh, reactionaries had the, uh, the stab in the back, right, the stab in the back that uh, they had been betrayed. Well, this is the legendary explanation for the Depression, is what Greenspan says. Greenspan seeks to lay the blame for the crisis uh, that, on the fact that domestic political pressures were exercised to boost home ownership. And he says the main cause of the Depression are the congressionally chartered mortgage companies, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, which were major consumers of subprime mortgages. Yeah, fine. They had been privatized, dear Bubbles. They worked fine as long as they were government uh, entities, parts of the U.S. government, government agencies. They were then privatized, so they kept a congressional charter and an implicit guarantee of Treasury backup. But they were then being run for money by the likes of the predator Franklin Raines and other uh, characters operating under left cover from the Clinton administration. And he says, the pressures on me at the Fed to enhance lending were uh, remarkable. So you see the idea. Uh, poor judgment, a human failure, uh, derivatives, as, as Brooksley Bourne says, the lack of regulation meant that derivatives could generate much larger risks than regulated financial products such as insurance. But uh, Greenspan, basically, his story is, the Democrats forced us to make home loans to poor people on, on the marginal or slum properties, and those subprime mortgages then defaulted, and that brought down the world banking system. And this is simply an idiotic, obscene joke that no serious person could entertain for two seconds. Nevertheless, you turn on Limbaugh, and that is what you will be told is the cause of the depression caused by the government of course not by 1.5 quadrillion in derivatives issued not by the government but by uh, the various bandits of the zombie banks of wall street now the question therefore is we now have greenspan discredited odious uh, contrite in some ways but arrogant in others uh, and he basically says well <laughs> at various times i was wrong and he said that at least before uh, and Bern- Bernanke comes forward uh, two months after getting more negative votes than anybody in history, and he's now dictating what the uh, rest of the uh, U.S. government should do. And, of course, he's uh, really unelected and uh, unaccountable. He operates in secret, doesn't want to be audited, and all the rest of that. So uh, this must change. And uh, what you would need is somebody to say to Bernanke, look, Bernanke, we are ordering you by law to issue one trillion dollars of zero percent federal credit for production only not for your banking friends no banks no insurance companies no investment banks no hedge funds none of that no uh money market funds nothing based on paper we're going to build fifty thousand miles of maglev a hundred reactors of the most modern type we're going to build a thousand modern hospitals we're going to rebuild the interstate highway system and we're going to rebuild our uh, water systems the sewage system canal system irrigation and all the rest of it. We're going to do the Tennessee Valley Authority treatment for every river valley in the U.S. that still hasn't had it uh, and beyond. And you're going to do that, and that's the law. 
So don't tell us about your policy that you make in secret with your buddies there from uh, from Pandit the Bandit and Diamond and Blank Fun. So um, this is now the problem. How can we take orders from Bernanke when we see uh, the man behind the curtain of the past uh, era there, Greenspan, the architect of the bubbles, uh, he has to come in and get a lambasting and a tongue lashing from the people who were right uh, on various things when he was completely wrong. Now, um, therefore, remember, the answer to this stuff is, on the one hand, the Tobin tax, the Robin Hood tax, the Wall Street sales tax, that's the tax we need. No VAT, no sales tax, nothing regressive. We want to tax the banks. And the way you tax the banks, hedge funds and investment banks, of course, included, that is on their turnover, which right now is not touched. No tax on it. There's nothing discriminatory, nothing vindictive about this. Some people even say, yeah, if you're in New York, you should pay the 8% sales tax or whatever it is that everybody else pays when they have to go and buy uh, a piece of consumer electronics or whatever it is. And that's a perfectly good position. Bring that position into the into the debate uh, is nothing nothing discriminatory. Now, shifting gears, let us see how new bubbles may uh, may emerge. They actually uh, they are emerging uh, around uh, Greece. We just had the Fitch Financial Rating Agency downgrade the government bonds, the state debt of Greece, uh, to BBB. So it's not triple A, it's not double A, it's not A, it's BBB. So it's triple B. And that's not so great. They're going to have to pay a whole lot more. Now, let me hasten to point out, Fitch, Moody's, and these people, they should all be in jail based on what they did in 2008. They shouldn't be raiding countries. They should be sitting in jail commenting on the food that they get from these countries. Back in a minute on World Crisis Radio. All right, World Crisis Radio. Webster Tarp here in Washington. So we're looking at uh, at Greece. Now, the the troubles have... uh, returned, as, meaning the attack by Soros, Soros Fund Management, uh, the rest of those people at that idea dinner in the beginning of February, the various uh, participants that you can see uh, listed there at uh, tarpley.net. Headline of the Wall Street Journal this morning, Friday, April 9th, Greek bond crisis spreads. Now, what's behind this, of course, is Fitch has downgraded Greek bonded debt, the government debt, to BBB. And uh, remember, Standard & Poor's, Moody's, Fitch, they should all be in jail. They should have been shut down and their people indicted and sent to the clink after 2008 when they were telling everybody right up to the last minute on Bear Stearns and Lehman Brothers, these are reputable companies, your investments are in good hands. A complete failure of these characters. These are essentially uh, politically uh, motivated uh, hitmen, economic hitmen, financial hitmen uh, of the uh, Anglo-American uh, banking cabal. So, Greek bond crisis spreads. Uh, it's, now we have um, the great fear is back because some of the largest banks in Greece on Wednesday of this past week turned to the Greek government, essentially asking for a bailout. Surprise! They hate government except when they want to get bailed out by it. Uh, Free market is a wonderful ideology as long as you don't take it seriously because when you're on the verge of bankruptcy, you will turn to the only institution powerful enough to save you, which is uh, government in this case. So the, the Greek banks turned to the government on Wednesday and asked for access to an emergency government liquidity facility, meaning money, meaning a bailout. So, uh... uh, We have a court in the Wall Street Journal, BNP Paribas, bank that uh, has dabbled in derivatives. They've been on the verge of uh, collapse themselves. Uh, They say this is a sign that the Greek government needs to make a phone call to the International Monetary Fund. In other words, bring in the vultures and the jackals who will impose conditionalities, a letter of intent, uh, and even worse austerity. Then you've got already basically the destruction of the country, right? The destruction of Greek civilization, which uh, n- nobody's been able to do so far. Maybe the IMF can do it. The form now ta- that it takes is, first of all, on the Greek uh, government bonds, uh, the Greeks have to pay six and two thirds percent more to borrow money. 
than does Germany. Germany considered the benchmark uh, sort of standard um, borrowing rate in, uh, in Germany, the equivalent of a U.S. Uh, Treasury bond, or what used to be that equivalent. Um, the Greeks have to spend six and two-thirds percent more to borrow money, but now the, the banks, uh, I won't go through all these banks, but the most dramatic is the, the number two bank in, um, in Greece. This is called EFG Eurobank Ergasias. EFG Eurobank Ergasias lost 8% yesterday, uh, Thursday, April 8th. And other banks taking a huge uh, dive. So this is now another round of the Soros uh, and uh, Goldman Sachs attack. And the way that they do it has been outlined in the uh, Wall Street Journal of the previous day, which is that they're using credit default swaps. They're using derivatives in the way that the um, Wall Street Journal puts this. This is now Rupert Murdoch dictating the contents of the news pages, not just the reactionaries and arch-reactionaries of the editorial page, but the news page. Investors playing defense heighten Greek debt woes. So now it's not, it's not those bad guys from Soros and Goldman Sachs. It's normal industrial companies. It's Coca-Cola Company and Dole Pineapple uh, company, Dole Food Company, they see a weakening euro. They're trying to use credit default swaps and swaps in general to um, to try to protect themselves from losses. And this is driving up the risk premium. This is making it uh, tougher and tougher for the Greeks to uh, to borrow money. And again, what the Greeks would need to do is to impose a Tobin tax of at least 1% on all derivatives including credit default swaps. You want to have any derivative that's going to have any application to any Greek national uh, issue of bonds or anything like that, you slap a Tobin tax on it. You take 1% or 2%, take 5%. Uh, and that takes the life out of the booze right away. That will scare off Soros and the rest of these jackals uh, in short order. Uh, unfortunately, um, the fact that the Greeks are locked into the euro means that they can't do the other obvious thing, which is credit controls, and uh, capital controls, exchange controls. Capital controls, exchange controls first um, to prevent hot money from coming in and out and attempting to collapse the currency because this country is now under attack. And this morning, CNBC showed you that the situation in terms of debt is actually Japan is approaching 200% of its gross domestic uh, product in terms of uh, accumulated debt. Italy about, I guess, 150%. Uh, and then you get some other places. Iceland makes the list uh, and so forth. Uh, it's time for governments to fight back. Uh, the only question is, will the jackals and hyenas of Soros and Goldman Sachs, Citibank, and the rest of them, will they succeed in bankrupting the modern state, or will the modern state fight back and put these predators where they belong, either in jail or in bankruptcy court? Because simply... Uh, you enforce the tax laws, enforce the existing antitrust laws, stop bailouts. You essentially uh, have these people going down because that's the, the irony is that they're essentially wards of the state that are biting the hand that feeds them. In a free market, they would have long since ceased to exist. So now, that's the, the European picture. Uh, Geithner has been in China. You can see a commentary by me from the uh, latter part of the week, uh, this past week, on Geithner in China. This is, again, the policy of exporting depression, beggar my neighbor, competitive devaluation. They're going to demand that the renminbi go up 40%, which means, again, that the dollar goes down 40%. That's competitive devaluation. Uh, what they should be thinking of doing in a rational world is to say, well, we have this island of stability between the U.S. and China, that a, a renminbi equals, uh, 6.8 renminbi equals a dollar. Why don't we try to build in the euro, the yen, the ruble, the Latin American regional currency, Arab currency, if that occurs, and uh, try to get a, a regime of fixed parity so we would be taking the steps back towards the successful Bretton Woods system and away from the chaotic and destructive and failed floating rate system, which has now been operating for about four decades since the collapse of Bretton Woods, on August 15, 1971, destroyed by Nixon, Kissinger, George Shultz, uh, and others. But no, they don't do that. 
um, the Chinese realize that if they allow the renminbi to go up, they will, even if it's just 3 or 4%, that will uh, bankrupt a part of their export economy. The Chinese export companies subsist on profit margins, which are often very thin, and if their uh, cost, if their prices go up in foreign markets, they will be priced out by even cheaper sweatshops in uh, places like Vietnam or Thailand or even further down the line. Uh, so that is going to cause unemployment. Unemployment means the possibility of social unrest, turbulence, mass strikes. Uh, with the Anglo-Americans fanning the flames, needless to say. So the Chinese would be well advised to, to get themselves out of this. Uh, as long as they have between $1 and $2 trillion worth of Treasury papers, I say on uh, Russia today, you're really in a bad situation because if you're depending on the U.S. consumer market, that's no good. The dollar, well, those Treasury bonds, if you keep them and just hold them, they're likely to dwindle in value. If you dump them, they will crash in value. So why don't you do something constructive? First of all, spend some of that money on yourself. Build a few thousand hospitals in rural China. Start attacking the problems of longevity and standard of living in rural China. And then a Marshall Plan for Africa in the form of a Sino-African Development Bank. Put a trillion in that and start developing Africa, and you will kick the IMF and the U.S. out of Africa. Do it that way. We'll be back on World Crisis Radio.